man. Now then, here we are, me and the mutt, and we are heading up Stickle Gill towards Stickle Town. And it is a dry day, finally, has been honestly just wet for a month at least in the UK. So there is a lot of water cascading its way down here off the mountains. And quite a bit already cascading off my forehead because it's a steep climb is this one. But we're going to head up to the town and from there we are going to go to the top of Paviark for a camp. But we're going to go up a grade one climb which is Jack's Rake up to the summit. So on a normal day it's quite passable uh, when it's dry but having a big backpack and the dog with me might be more challenging anyway we are gonna get ourselves up and just enjoy the beautiful scenery that we have all the way around what do you say blue ready go on then get on he's off practice section and a couple of bits of this just on the way up here but nothing too technical but you don't have to use your hands <laughs> dog's already up it's now for him hey Bluey hey go on then get on <laughs> he says he says Embarrassing me, dog. <laughs> yeah, blue here. Ready, fine. Good boy, kill him Go on. glimmer of sunshine oh I feel blessed I haven't seen that thing for a while oh finally out of all that white noise literally white noise and it's actually quite nice and peaceful now I am just heading to the actual town itself here and this is the banking that holds it all back Here we are, Stickle Tarn. What a beautiful place to come. There's plenty of places around here to camp as well, so it's quite a nice straightforward one to get to and it's fairly sheltered because you've got this massive rock that is just sat there. And we are heading up through the middle of that, literally the center of it and sort of a traversing across up to the top and that is Pavey Arc. And you can see where it's just been highlighted by the sun at the minute. That's pretty much the route that we're going up. It is epic, absolutely epic. I cannot wait to get started. So once we get to the top, I've got a steak dinner to look forward to, so that's gonna keep me going. And I've also got the Abisco Light One Tent from Fjell Raven. And what else? Oh, I've got a new jacket, a new insulative jacket to try out, which uh, I've been wearing quite a few times anyway, but um, it's gonna be nice just to test it out on a mountain. And uh, that is made by Columbia. So yeah, looking forward to that too. So let's uh, get ourselves all the way around here to the start of Jack's Rake.
it is definitely quite menacing as you walk towards it it's just one of those places that is very exposed and there's little help from the bottom or the top and no easy outs either and this is why it's classed as a grade one scramble one that you have to be very careful on and you need to use your hands at several points so you need to be strong enough to sort of pull yourself up and out especially with the backpack on and a dog so we will get to the bottom and constantly assess as we are going up how easy it is to get up and how easy it is to get back down as well because what we don't want to do is get stuck in any position where we have to fend for ourselves for the evening <laughs> which wouldn't be fun yeah awesome absolutely awesome So we have made it to the start point of Jack's Rake, which is up towards that tree if you can see that. And from here, it looks pretty much impossible, like it's an impossibility to get yourself up there. But there's a little way of just sort of winding yourself up through the rocks, a few little squeezes and little climbs here and there, but... So it's definitely going to be a challenging one. The main thing is try to keep myself safe and the dog safe. So there might be times where I have to take his backpack off because currently He's sort of losing a little bit of his agility with that on and obviously he's better without it. So there might be a time where I have to sort of hoi that up myself. I do have a rope in his backpack and a carabiner or two. So what I can do with that is actually pull him up if I need to. So I can attach it to his harness and give him a tug up or lower him down depending. But safety first. And uh, as I'm going up, assess all the way as well just to make sure that it's accessible back down in case we can't proceed any further just because of the dog mainly. So yeah. Let's bash on, eh? Let's get on up there. Lou, climb. Go on. Right at the start then, we are already scrambling. So there's uh, plenty of places to put your hands, but a lot of this is polished, so you've got to be a bit sort of careful and it's a little bit damp in places, so we just have to take that extra care, don't we, Blue? So what I'll do is, section by section, we'll get the dog up, and then I'll make him sort of stay there, then I'll climb up a bit, maybe carry on a bit further, you know, just sort of leapfrog each other and get ourselves up to the top. Right, ready then, go on then, go. Go on, climb. Right, stand, stand, good boy. Step at a time. Don't need to push it too much, dog, do we? Let me just get up here. That's a good handhold. Right. You ready again? Ready? Climb. Come on. Good lad. All right, stand. He has it. A little bit slippy for both of us. See, so how greasy all this is, but in summer it's a little bit drier than this, but in winter <laughs> it is complete change. I wouldn't attempt it in winter, no chance, because it's a place where you'd have to be roped on, and it will go from being a grade one scramble to a grade two or three. I would have thought so, all right, Bluey. Look at that though, what a place. Ah. On to the next bit. Here then, climb. Good boy. Stand. I think you'd be better going up there maybe. Yeah, climb here. Ready? Fine. Stand. Let me come over to you. Keep going there. Come. Come. Good boy. Keep going. Blue. Right. Fine. 
Good boy, stand. Definitely a place you've got to think about what you're doing, where you're putting your feet and hands. Come on, climb. Stand. Wait right there. Good boy. Ready? Climb. Good boy. Stand. Good boy. Not for the faint hearted. It's quite a long drop down here. And we've only just started, so we just have to really take care, steady away, and make sure this dog's safe. So, right then, Blue, come here then. Stand. Because this next section is quite awkward. If we turn you around, you can just see up through this little gully bit here. So, it's going to be a bit tight. With a backpack, it'll be tight, and obviously, the dog's backpack will be tight too. So, <laughs> slow and steady, eh? Just stunning though, look at that. How lucky are we to be up here? Just absolutely incredible. Right then, Blue. This is gonna be tricky, very tricky. Are you ready? That's the first section done, and we are currently by the tree. And I've gotta say, it's pretty tricky that, mainly because we've got the backpacks on. So for me, this thing gets in the way a little bit when you're sort of turning and trying to sort of uh, squeeze yourself through the sort of gully sections and with the dog and luckily he's got a really good handle on the back of it but again he gets sort of caught on the sort of rock so i've got to be a bit careful with him so i grab the handle and i can sort of lift him up just take a few sort of pounds of weight off him and then paw wheel drive comes into action and he just sort of gets himself up onto the next ledge so currently he's quite happy and just safe just up there and i'm just going to make my way up to him now obviously i'm not going to film all sections of this because i do need both hands to get myself up so whatever I show you on here isn't going to be a true representation of it because uh, there'll be the main harder parts missed out and those are the bits that will uh, catch you out if you're not careful so don't judge it on this and just make sure that if you are coming up places like this just do your research first and just make sure that it's within your capabilities because it's, it's an unforgiving place. The mountains always are. And you know, the risks that are involved in all this are fantastic. They give you the most amazing feeling ever, but they are risks and that's the thing. You've got to be careful. There are always risks involved as soon as you leave your house. And coming to the mountains, this just increases those risks further. So yeah, just do your best just to minimize those risks, that's all. And for me, it's more of a risk for me to sit at home on the sofa and slowly rot away and die that way. Whereas here, I just feel like I'm living. This is it, this is me just enjoying my life as much as I can. And yes, this might be a bit too technical for some people, so don't maybe attempt this. But, you know, get yourselves out, walk into your local park, get out onto the fells, just enjoy all this. And there are just so many things which suit every single different type of ability. And it's just a case of embrace as much as you can in life, that's all. And do you know what? If I died here and I fell off this cliff, I would be a happy man. I really would. I just feel like still fulfilled and that I am doing what I enjoy the most. So if you ever find me dead on a mountain somewhere, then just strip me naked, leave no trace and all that, and just leave me out for bugs and birds. And that'll be me. And that's me speaking from happiness. It's not a sad thing to talk about. I would have died a very happy man, so. <laughs> and the other thing is, make sure you find the camera, make a nice video and title it something lovely like Al's last dance anyway from here we have to go up this next section which is pretty tricky yeah that's going to be hard work and it's a fair long way down there so steady away <laughs> Thank you. 
small steps that's all we need right this is going to be really awkward to get the dog through here I'm going to have to lift him up I think that little section there was really tough with the dog just sort of encased a little bit so I had to sort of push him flat against the wall while I sort of got up another level and I could pick him up and chuck him up a bit higher but off here you can see it's a fair drop so <laughs> let's keep this going that's what we don't want to do is get trapped on here in the dark either obviously I've got head touch and stuff but not the safest place to be that will be a case of camping out for the night somewhere here on one of the safer sections because I wouldn't really want to risk it in the dark but push come to shove little flat areas like this you'll be able to wrap up and keep yourself warm if you needed Another tricky bit that, just showing the dog over the top. Oh. And he has no fear, he's right on the edge there, watching the drone. Here then Blue, come here. Come on.
that's most of the hard stuff done there and we've just got to continue up this steeper section here more clambering about but the funny thing is this daft dog all the way up has been bringing me stones to play fetch with i mean what what is all that about he's obviously just in his element just loving this as if it's just like literally a walk in the park hey bluey <laughs> what a dog eh what a dog but it's just so peaceful i mean look at that town there it's just lovely flat as anything there's barely any wind it's a lovely day to do it really although a bit damp blue come here away from that edge come on <laughs> it has no fear whatsoever and there's a few people down in the bottom there just sort of uh having a mosey around the actual town but what a fantastic day to be out i mean just look at the mountains there sun just catching some of them and yeah happy man happy man right on with this next bit then up there Come on, Blue. Next little challenge. Right, ready? Go on. Stand. Right, let me get in position then. Hold them up there. Ready? Climb. Go on. Stand. Good boy. Let me just come up a level. See if we can do this. Ready? Come on, climb. Go on. Go on. Go on. Stand. <laughs> Ready again. Wait there. Wait. Wait there. You're wedged in. You're alright. Let me see if I can get up one level. Let me get Seth first, Blue. Let me get Seth first. I need my foot where yours is. Right, that's better. Right, ready? I'm going to have to lift you up and behind me. Okay. Right, good boy. Good boy. Right, ready? Hold on, I'm not in a good place for this. Let's put them up there. Go on. Good boy. There we go. We have it, dog. We have it. Whew. That was tough. That was a tough one. It was like a one rep max, just lifting dog up and over my head. Wait, Lou. Let's just work this next bit out. It's quite a long way down there. Gotta be a little bit careful. Right, I think we're gonna be better going up here. Right, Blue. This is a bit awkward, come here. I might struggle to get you up there, come here. Uh, I need you that way around. That way, good lad. Right, hold on, it's down there. <sighs> right, you ready? Good lad. All right, stand. He's up. My turn now. Good boy. 
Oh boy, ready? Just want to... Wait. Go that way. Wait. Ready? Oh boy. Oh. Tough little climb that. There is another way around there, but I don't really like the look of that one, so we went the direct route up here. Whew. Right, Blue, come here. Here, to me. Climb. Ready? Go on then, climb. No, no, I've got you, I've got you. Good boy, stay there. Good boy. That's it. Go on then, climb. Climb. Come on. Get on. Alright, stand there, stand, stand. I've got you. Good boy. Stand. I'll have to come up to you, dog. I'll have to come up to you. It's a bit of an awkward one. I want to put your feet flat. Let me lay down. <laughs> We're both holding on for dear life here. Yeah, you're sort of stuck in all this hard work and just concentrating so hard and then look. Just take a look back and wow, just amazing. <sighs> yep. Yeah. I'm looking forward to some food though. Steak dinner. Up, dog. Ready? Go on. Good lad. I've just come to this section here. And it's a little bit awkward it's not too bad to sort of pull yourself across with hands but for the dog it's quite a long fall down there and i just i can't really risk that so what i'm gonna do is get out the rope clip him on make him stand still here wherever he is and then i will climb up with the rope and then i'll sort of pull him and just make sure that he doesn't fall down this <laughs> this massive section here so right sun's coming out there look at that it is beautiful I've got myself in a nice strong seated position. My feet are pushing flat against a nice sort of upstand, so I'm in a good strong place here. And now it's a case of just slowly winding this dog up here. You ready then, Blue? Right, come here. Sand. Just keep shortening the rope when I need to. Ready? Climb, come on. Come on. Come on. Good lad. Good lad, well done. Good lad. Stand. There's a good boy, eh? What an awesome dog. Here then, come here. <laughs> it's about the first time I've had him on a lead. Oh, great. Near at the top, and now we can get to that point where we can have some dinner. You are just awesome, dog. Absolutely awesome. You ready for the next bit? Right up here then. Ready? Ready? Climb. Good boy. Oh, just covered me in water though. Look at that behind me. What an amazing view. 
and you can see the reflections of the clouds off the town there just looking absolutely stunning I would not want to be anywhere else I really wouldn't ready blue climb go on you got it all right stand blue stand good boy he's not daft he gets himself to a point where he's safe Oh, that's that bit then blue here, fine. Go on. Stand. There we go, challenge complete, taking the dog up Jack's Rake. And I'll tell you what, it was very challenging at times. I had obviously had to sort of uh, help him up and make sure that he was sort of safe all the way. And he would no chance being able to do that without me. And most things he can do, things like striding edge, um, what else, sharp edge, all that, he'll do no problem. But that was definitely a lot more technical. And it's got a lot to do with our trust and relationship. We've got so much experience together doing these sorts of things that he anticipates what I'm gonna do. He'll wait for it. He knows that I'm gonna sort of help him up, grab him on his harness, shove him up, all that. And he listens to what I say. And that's the main thing. If you've got a dog, make sure they are under control. And if you've got a dog on a lead doing something like this, there is just no chance because that would make it really dangerous for you and it's just not worth risking it. So yeah, if you're gonna ever attempt anything with a dog, then just make sure that you've got that bond and the practice behind it because it makes it a hell of a lot easier. That goes with human relationships too because what you don't wanna do is get out on adventures and then everybody be reliant on you. You need to have that sort of balance. So it's worth sort of building that experience up with other humans, just so when you come out, you can actually help each other and you feel that um, you're all contributing towards it. So that just makes it a hell of a lot safer. And what, there's probably five or six people in your life that you actually trust with your life. I would say that's the case for me. My lad has just turned 18 and he's one of those people. And that's because I've brought him up until he's 18 and kept him alive all that time and uh, he's trusted me with his life many a time, lots of times out climbing, especially when we were, he was a lot younger. And then um, now he's 18, he's a tough lad, and you know I trust him to come and do anything like this with me. Not a problem whatsoever. So, yep, just form them bonds. Anyway, it is time to get up here, stop the waffle, and um, find a place to pitch a tent. A last little tiny slither of sunshine there. It is gonna be down any second. So I've been sort of scouting around just on these sort of ledges, which is straight above the town there. And that is a cliff and we walked all the way along this. So it's quite nice to sort of feel like I'm sat on top of it now after that effort. So anyway, this is a spot that is hopefully gonna work. It's quite sheltered. It's got all these sort of rocks around and about and it's flat enough. There's just a, a little bit of a wet patch there, but it should be right. So let's get this tent set up. Change of plan. It was going to go there, but I decided to go around the corner to get a better view in the morning. And the fact that's got a little bit of water there. So let's come round this corner. And there she is. The Fjallraven Abisko Light 1. Looking proud. Always happy when I'm in this tent. So, it is starting to drop cold.
by his fond is this dog. Anyway, we are in. Blue is laid on his mat that I made him and that's insulated with a load of layers of foil insulation. So it reflects a bit of heat back to him to keep him warm off the ground. He's also got absolutely tons of hair which just keeps him warm like a sleeping bag. I've got my sleeping bag and I've also put on this jacket which is a, a new one from Columbia but I'll uh, tell you a bit more about this later. But it is doing the trick keeping me warm tonight. I've also got a nice little hat on just to help me out. There's tons of dog hair flying about so you might see a bit of that. I have uh, got the tent in this little tight, tight spot. I did have to shorten a couple of the guy lines to make it work but um, it's in and solid. I've put all the guys in even though there's no wind at the minute because I think tomorrow the weather could be pretty dire. So it's worth just making sure that it's pegged down properly. I have got a couple of beers if you can see that. So I am looking forward to opening one of them in fact i might just have to do that now let's get one of them open and yeah all the kits in steak dinner to cook life is sweet doesn't really get much better than this does it on top of a mountain with a fantastic view for the morning where i'm going to see the most beautiful sunrise you can just about sit up in here albeit a little bit hunched but this is just how it goes when you're trying to do the lightweight wild camping thing Although it wasn't too lightweight today, I've got to say, because that backpack weighed a ton. But this tent didn't contribute that much to it. It only weighs about one and a half kilos. It packs pretty small. And um, as an all-round tent, I think it is hard to beat. I really do. There's plenty of amazing tents out there, but um, this one I've tested to breaking point. So uh, I do pretty much trust it in most conditions, definitely. And if you've not seen that video of me doing the Storm Arwen camp on the top of Great End, then check that out, because it is pretty awesome, is that? Me and the dog surviving the night, eh? So after all that hard work today, let's have a beer. And this is from North Brewing Co. And we'll start with this one, which is double transmission if you can see that and it is eight percent it's a double ipa and it reads lusciously smooth and dripping with tropical stone fruit and a tacky pine resin flavor this is one of our beloved transmission turned up and enhanced we've doubled down on it all so that's the double ipa eight percent so yeah it's got a fair kick to it so let's open this up Oh, do you know what? I am in need of this. Oh yeah, smells good as that one. Mm. That is a fresh drink, is that? It's just smooth, it just uh, goes down really well. And for 8%, it's pretty dangerous, is that? Because I could drink a few of these. Could definitely taste the uh, tropical sort of stone fruit in it, but it's not overpowering at all. Sometimes they can be a bit tangy and sharp, but that is a, a nice one. Is that for definite? I'm not sure about the tacky fine, <laughs> the tacky pine resin flavour. I'm drunk already. I've thoroughly enjoyed that beer, the double transmission. And now I'm going to open this one, which is Invisible Cities, 6.7%, a hazy IPA. A full-bodied and hazy IPA full of juicy orange, zesty lime and creamy coconut flavour. Interesting. Let's get this open. I'm also aware that I'm actually right on a cliff edge. So, cliff edges and alcohol don't mix too well. But, hey-ho. Mmm, that's all right. It's not dissimilar to the other one, but it's just got a, a creaminess to it, which is probably that coconut. Yes. Right. Let's pop that in my boot, which I can't see because I'm getting blinded by a light here. So it is time to think about dinner. What have I got to cook? So firstly, and mainly, a big fat steak with some peppercorn sauce so that is going to be nice and to go with that I have got some potatoes in a tin so hopefully I've got my uh, Swiss army knife to open that otherwise that's just pretty much pointless 
and what I'll do is I'll chop them up a bit finer and fry them off. Although I don't have any oil, so we'll do whatever that is called, heating them off in a pan. I've also got some nice vine tomatoes there, which I'll just heat in the pan as well. And also some broccoli, of course. And this is just some sort of like tender stem broccoli. So I'll just lay that flat in the pan and just again, heat that up a little bit. And that's dinner, proper nice steak dinner, eh? So firstly, let's get the gas ready. I'll just whiz that on. I'll just check this works. I'll just let a little bit of gas out. There we go. So happy with that. So I'm just going to put a wider base of support on it using this. And the reason I need to do that is because I've got a massive frying pan to use on it. So this is a 10 inch pan. It's the Cetus Summit Alpha Pan, 10 inch. So that's just going to sit nicely on there and I'm going to cook the whole lot in this pan. Simple. Let's get cooking. Heat this pan up first. It's going to be a bit of an awkward one just to make all this work, I reckon. And it's also a little bit of an awkward one filming it. But I will do my best. Let's get this steak out and let her breathe. Oh, I am excited about this. Good old steak. So first job, I think what I'm going to do is just pop some of these potatoes in. I've poured the water out. They're quite small, so I'm just going to heat them as they are. That's the whole lot. Some spuds. Exciting. I think maybe I'll pop the broccoli in at the same time. At least we'll get that sort of cooked off. That looks nice and clean and fresh. Lay that in. And I've got a little spatula as well just for stirring it all around. Lovely. Yeah, it's not quite big enough just to do everything all in one. I still need space for the steak and these tomatoes as well, but tomatoes won't take a minute anyway, so. Yes, it is chilly though. I can definitely feel it on my hands. This jacket's working well though, I've got to say. Well, those potatoes are cooking off well. Very happy with those. The broccoli is warming up slightly. We'll call that extra al dente. So I'm going to pop them on top of those potatoes now. They've cooked a bit. And then we're going to get this big fat steak out. A nice bit of sirloin. And it is quite a chunk. Look at that baby. So I'm going to just lay this in. Wipe my fingers. And I'm going to make the dog jealous. I'll have to give him some though, of course I will. He's my boy and he has done so well today. To be able to get up the whole of that Jack Ray. Yeah, he's a good lad. And with a backpack on. Legend. Can't resist. Let's try a spud. Wow, that's not actually bad at all. I say I've done nothing with it. Literally ticked it out of the tin, into the pan, and just fry it off a little bit. Wait till I get that peppercorn sauce on. That'll transform the lot. And a few dog hairs, it's always help.
Gonna make some space for these tomatoes and we'll pop them in. Tomatoes with a bit of beef always works well. I'll just pull them off the vine, pop them in whole. How many can I eat? That's the thing. That looks like a good meal though, doesn't it? Look at that. That is a good meal. Sod it, these tomatoes are all going in. I'll save one and eat it now. The last thing to go in is the peppercorn sauce. So I'm just going to get my scissors out on my Swiss Army knife. Comes in handy this, doesn't it? And I'll just chop a very small corner off this. And hopefully we can just pour a little bit on. Oh yes! Oh, I'm so excited now. Cannot wait. Let's heat that up a little bit with it. Get a bit more on. This is it. This is actually living the dream. Unbelievable this. Cooking a full steak dinner on a mountain. Right, I think we are about done. Let's just turn this off. Oh, take a look at that though. That is just perfect. Look at those lovely tomatoes there. A bit of green, some potatoes, and a big fat steak. Life is just sweet. Can't beat it, cannot beat it. I do love life, I really do. I get so excited about it. Right, I don't know how I'm gonna eat this now. I need to find a fork. And I've got a spork. So I'm going to have to use the knife off my Swiss Army knife, which is <laughs> very dirty from cutting all sorts over the years. But there we go. I have some fighting irons and now I can't really pop this on anything because it's going to burn me. So I'm just going to have to sort of leave it a minute just to cool down slightly and then we'll crack on and eat some. I live by the phrase, necessity is the mother of invention. So when you have a need for something, then you will find a way to make it work. And what I've done is, I had a think of what I had, and I came up with this. So this is Blue's silicon mat, which I use to feed him on. So I use it just as a, a way just to put his food on and just keep it off the ground sometimes. And I also can turn it into a bit of a cone, which allows me to make a bowl for him. So I can put water in there and he can drink out of it. So that works in two ways like that. But being a silicon mat and the size of it, it fits perfectly this pan on top. So now I can sit that on my knee and eat my dinner. Get that. Let's have a taste then, eh? We'll start with a spud. It looks good. It tastes good. And a tomato, and they have softened so well. Oh, my mouth is watering. Mm. Wow. Simple things. And this broccoli is cooked now. It's uh, nice to cut. Wow, blue. So mainly, Let's chop into this steak. Go right down the middle. I generally prefer it sort of medium, medium rare. And today I have overcooked it. And we are looking probably about medium. A little bit of pink still inside there, but it does look good. Let's chop a chunk off and have a taste. Bit of peppercorn sauce too. Mm. Wow, just melts in your mouth that. 
chop a piece off for the dog. You know your name, don't you? I think she'll be cool enough. You ready, Blue? Hear them. Come on. <laughs> you didn't mess about with that, did you, dog? There you go, then, Blue. Ready? Yeah. Nice. You didn't even taste it, did you? You didn't. I could cut this with a butter knife. Absolutely perfect. So I'm going to sit back now and enjoy this and give you another wow. Wow. Drink my beer and just reflect on the day because it has been an absolutely awesome day. Totally loved it and this is just topping it off now. Yep, I am a very, very happy man. Cheers, guys. I am well fed and well watered, so feeling very satisfied. And the dog is exactly the same because he's just fast asleep down there, bless him. It has been a lovely day, though, and quite a challenge to get up Jack's rake. It is definitely a something that if you're going to try, just research first and make sure that uh, you are up to that as a challenge taking a dog up there i wouldn't advise it i mean blue with the backpack on definitely did struggle and he's about as adventurous as you can get as a dog he's very experienced and there was times where he was definitely struggling and obviously i had to help him up just to uh, get him to the top of it but we are comfortably in our tent and feeling happy and that is the main thing the mountain weather forecast said it was going to drop down to near freezing tonight and i tell you what it's nearly there now luckily i am in my rab sleeping bag which is keeping my legs warm and i'm also in this new jacket to me which is from colombia not the country and this is the platinum peak jacket and um, it's part of the titanium range and it uses the omniheat infinity technology which is I might as well show you, but it's pretty much a foil blanket. If you can see that, there's thousands of little gold dots in there which just reflect the heat back to your body. And it seems to work really well. And the good thing about that is it allows it to be a smaller pack size than probably something that is um, the same sort of uh, insulative value. So quite impressed by it. Oh, it started raining. The jacket has two pockets, as you'd expect, at the front, which are quite spacious, so you can fit your big fat hands in in your big fat gloves. They've also got zips on. The hood fits nicely around your head. The only thing I wish it did have is one of those sort of pull cords just to tighten it up, just in case it gets windy, but because it's fairly sort of good fit to your head, I don't think there'll be much of an issue with it anyway. And the good thing is you can get it up and down without undoing this. Uh, what else? We have a little attachment point here for gloves on each sleeve. So if you're one of these people who lose your gloves, then you get them tied on like a kid. <laughs> Inside we've got a little pocket here, which is just big enough to fit my little wallet, which has not much money in. Um, so the, some of the other YouTubers might not fit their wallets in there. And the best feature of all... I'll just flip this off a second. Imagine walking on the fells and you come across Andy Wardle in his disco tent. Look at this. You have an outfit all ready to join him. Boom. <laughs> Anyway, it has been a complete pleasure today. Me and the dog have had a challenging day getting up uh, Jack's rake, but we made it. That was the main thing. And, you know, set yourself some challenges in life and do take risks, but just be careful. That is not a place to be messing about at all. One tiny little slip and you are falling a long way and there's a good chance you won't survive it. There really is. Anyway, it is time for me to lay this log and get myself to sleep. So we will see the morning. Let's uh, get in the spirit of Andy Wardle and disco the night away. <laughs> 
See you in the morning. Morning flowers. What a rough night that was. It got to about three o'clock in the morning and the wind just started hammering this tent. And then the rain came and I've just had intermittent sleep ever since. And the tent is completely soaking just everywhere, but that's just because we are completely clagged in. Just 100% moisture in the air. Not much you can do about it. And I tell you what, I don't want to get out of this sleeping bag. <laughs> I really don't. But I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to pack all this gear up whilst in the tent as much as possible and then just leave the tent till the last minute. <laughs> ah dear. Yep, it is time to escape this mountain. Just five more. Well, we're ready to get out. Blue's got his waterproof jacket on. I've got my waterproof jacket on. And the bag has got its waterproof jacket on. So it is time to brave the elements. Are you ready, Blue? Let's do it. Dude. <laughs> oh man. not easy we're both ready to go though packed up all the gear away leave no trace as always i've not got any waterproof bottoms on so i'm gonna get wet legs but it's only downhill to the car so i'm gonna suffer for that anyway <laughs> let's bash on eh get on them blue the river the blues made it across on his own <laughs> my turn now and it is going to be a wet one
we're back at the town after an epic adventure from start to finish the whole lot and yes it has been uncomfortable at times obviously when you are trying to sleep in a tent that's rattling around and you've got all the rain battering you as you're walking back down the mountain but it is all part of it and me and blue thrive in it we absolutely love it definitely get yourselves outside and just enjoy this as much as possible just buy the right kit for the job and make sure that you know how to use it and that is about it really get some experience build it up and uh just go enjoy it and keep safe because some of these places are very very dangerous as always give it a big fat thumbs up and delve into the back catalogue and watch all the other videos because there are some awesome adventures in there even if it's in the middle of summer there's some really really nice uh, videos there so check all those out join the patreon to contribute towards the channel you can buy me a coffee to contribute towards the channel and you can just send messages and as i say like this video anyway from me and the beautiful blue we'll see you another time take care